he's speaking. He's pouring himself right now, right now for you. Oh, listen, this is what God is saying. For I know the plans I have for you. And he said, I know just what you're going through. Yes. So when you can't see what tomorrow holds and yesterday is through, remember I know. For you that's what the Lord said he said see I know the plans I have for you and you and you praise the Lord beloved on behalf of Apostle Dwayne Broussard and our MOGFC family we want to thank you for inviting us into your home I know this message will be a blessing so call a friend a neighbor or get a group and get ready to receive a fresh word from the Lord that will be life changing remember Jesus loves you and so do we here at Mystery of God's Fellowship Church now here is Apostle D with the message the presence of God to flow in this house like never before yes, heavenly father eternal God I step back that you may step up I pray that I decrease that thy spirit may increase that they neither see me nor hear me today but thy word and thy word alone penetrate to the core of our heart yes, that we all become living epistles to be read by all men women and children Holy Ghost show us the master God my prayer today is that you give us ears to hear in a heart to receive your word that none of us leave here the way we came. Now God, we come with one voice on one accord to decree and declare that you are the Lord of the harvest, yes. the Lord of the righteous, and you are the Lord of the Sabbath. It is an honor to serve you. Lord God, we give you glory, we give you praise. We pray for prophetic unction and divine healing. God, move me out the way, God. God, anoint me that I may complete this assignment. Feed us all today. Yes, God. Now, Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus Christ's name. Let everyone in agreement say amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a praise. God. Oh, are you still excited about the resurrection? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 My God, my God, my God. Last week the Bible says that the puzzle started uh, when he was in the garden. Amen. 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 My God, aren't you glad that you're part of the, the, the picture? You're part Amen. of the puzzle. Amen. Amen. My God, my God. Come on, look at our brother and sister and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. Not because I say so. Not because I say so. Because the word of God says so. The word of God says so. Now how many know, even though we're in the, the first quarter, Amen. hallelujah, God has fulfilled his prophecy, Amen. but God is doing something else in the land. And there's a warfare going on in the heavenlies. And it's just not attacking one, it's attacking America. God is uncovering, amen, the truth of man's heart, mm. amen. And I believe that with every fiber of my spirit. And uh, part of that, what I'm saying is he's attacking people's memory, He's attacking uh, uh, people, uh, uh, not only memory, but their direction, their directional sense in terms of uh, easily losing focus. And this is a spiritual warfare. Just like God spoke to us and said, the enemy is messing with what? The electronics, the electronics if you remember that. And he said all the gadgets, whether it's a microwave, your beeper, your cell phone, a TV, they're making war in the heavenlies. In case you don't know it, America is under attack right now. And I'm not just talking natural, oh spiritually. My God. Amen. 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 My God, my God. But God is faithful to his people Amen. where he Lord. prophesied and said, I will open doors for you this year Amen. that no man can shut. Hallelujah. Oh Ronnie, do it. Come on with me to the book of Exodus chapter 3. We won't be in your head too long. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to pop in and pop out. To God be the glory. Exodus chapter 3. 
and we'll wait on you. Get it? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 3, starting at verse 1, the King James Version reads this way. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. Amen. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Can I pause for a minute? Yeah. At this juncture, if you know the story, how many years have passed since he left Egypt? 40, 40 years. Yep. He is now 80 years old. And it wasn't until he turned aside to see God that God said, uh, now he's starting to look for me. And did anybody come for a word this morning? Did you come really expecting? Hallelujah. He turned aside and God said, now, nah, now you're looking for me. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes people a long time to understand God want to use you. Yes or no? Yes. He says, here I am. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoe from off thy feet. For the place thereof or wherein thou standest is holy ground. Amen. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrows. And I am come down uh, to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land unto a good land, a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Come on, look at somebody and say, and? Come on now. God's telling you, I heard the afflictions of my people. What should your response be? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. I'm going to say, what that have to do with me? Can we keep it real? I'm over here, and they're over there. Hallelujah. God is saying, I heard the afflictions of our people. You don't think Moses is like, okay, and? Yeah, yeah. Now you ain't good. Could you hear Moses? God, you ain't telling me nothing new. That's why I left. Hmm. Okay. Yes or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at verse 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee. Oh, that's why you're talking to me. You want to use me. Come on, look at somebody and say, God want to use me. God want to use me. Hallelujah. I've seen the afflictions of Ahmaud Aubrey, Sandra Blaine, George Floyd. Okay, what does that have to do with me? Yes or no, somebody? Is anybody upset? That the uh, the Georgia's the Georgia legislator got arrested, made news because she knocked on the door. She's supposed to be in there. That's her job to watch the signing of laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made news. What didn't make news is they dropped the charges on last Tuesday. Come on now. You didn't hear that. No. What did that have to do with me? Come on now. <clears throat> mm. Come on, somebody. Woo. He says, I'm going to send you. Come on. And that, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. 
And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Upon what? This, this mountain. mountain. Great. <laughs> Man, there's so much meat Great. on that bone. See, we got everything we call into God now, right? God is anywhere and everywhere except in the mountain he chose. Verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is thy name? What should I say unto them? Because you know God, me and you ain't never really talk. Hallelujah. This is my first time ever hearing your voice. And the first time I hear a voice, you giving me a commission? Yeah. Uh, these people going to say, I don't believe that. Am I talking to anybody where it's hard for you to believe God will stop and talk to you? The God of the universe. He says, what is your name? What should I say unto them? Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Come on now. And God said, Move unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto what? All generations. All generations. Is that part of your generation? Yes. Amen. All generations. Come on, look at our brother and sister and say, by faith, by I'm faith. gonna get this word. I'm gonna get this it's word. gonna change my life. Change my Come life. on, look at our brother and sister and say, I love you. I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Now I don't know if I want to teach a little bit or preach a little bit or I'm just ready to jump into this word. Are you ready to get blessed? Are you ready to get fed? Amen. Yes. Children of Zion, yes. we should understand that change without a God touch mm. is self-improvement, okay, mm -hmm. but not necessarily a God involvement. Come on. Change. I'm going to go back to school. Yes. I'm going to go clean, spring clean, clean behind the stove. Uh, it could be self-improvement, but it does not necessarily have to be a God involvement. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. A God purpose mm -hmm. is never divided. Mm -hmm. A God purpose is never divided. He's not going to change his mind. A God purpose Say that with me. A God, God purpose, purpose. God is never divided. It's never divided. What am I talking about? There's too many of us, or so many of us, Come on. so many of us wants to call our thing a God thing. Come on now. God is not divided, men and women of God. We cannot have our thing coexisting with God thing. Hallelujah. I couldn't be a hustler still shooting pool, hustling people out their money, gambling at the racetrack, drinking and selling drugs, and still saying I'm a preacher. Ouch. Ouch. I said your thing cannot coexist with God thing. Hallelujah. So many people is trying to make God fit into what they're doing it and calling it a God thing. Come on now. The truth of the matter is many of us have mastered the manipulation of giving an outward appearance that our world is full and fine. Mm. I'm too blessed to be stressed. 
God bless me with this vehicle. God bless me with this. But you ain't telling nobody you cheated. Hallelujah. Hmm. So we've mastered the manipulation of an outward appearance that my world is fine. But inside, you know your world is empty. Come on. Who can stop the pain? Yes, May I put you in remembrance of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The Bible records it this way. For the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and it added no sorrow to it. Now you have to couple that with a New Testament verse in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, which a lot of people know, right? And we know that all things work together for good, for them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Yes, God has one purpose, and it cannot be divided. Come on. Did you come for a word? Okay. In other words, brothers and sisters, success begins when you stop running from God and stop giving excuses to God. Come on. Come on. Well, I'm a single parent. I said, okay, like I didn't know that. Hallelujah. Amen. God, I'm in my 80s. Okay, I didn't know that. Guess how old Moses is? He's 80 years old. Children of Zion, please hear me. Tired of being broke in the world may leave us vexed and defeated. But being broken in God will give us the victory. Mm. The Bible says, he who falls on the rock shall be broke, but he who the rock falls on shall be crushed. Yes, Broken in God will give you the victory. Church attendance is not the be-all of Come pipe on. wrenches to release the pressures of God's purpose and plan or God's original purpose and plan on your life. Ooh, that's a lot of pressure believing God's called me to be a pastor. God's called me to be a, a teacher. God's called me to do this. God called me to go into prison minutes. That's a whole lot of pressure. God told me to start my own business. That's a whole lot of pressure. So you know what? Maybe if I just go to church, God may understand, but at least I'm going to church. I said, God's plan or purpose is not divided. Hallelujah. Oh, you have folks that's trying to huh, say, well, I'm always broke. I have more month than I have money. Yes or no? Who I thank God for these stimulus checks. You understand sinners got stimulus checks too, right? What makes you different? Hallelujah. Riches. Well, church, uh, a house on a hill can never replace the eternal riches of Calvary's hill. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It can never replace the eternal riches of Calvary's hill. Amen. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm telling you. You have to have a right relationship with God that will allow you to walk in the fullness of of his purpose. You got to have a right relationship with God. You can't say, ooh, let me smoke these funny cigarettes. Ooh, now I can feel God. Mm -hmm. You feeling something, but it ain't God. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How, how many know what's another name for liquor? Anybody? Spirit. Spirits. Because they make you feel all up, a whole bunch of different spirits, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. People used to uh, do that funny drug and they go psychedelic. Ooh, I had an epit. No, you didn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. In case you don't know, drugs are found in the book of Genesis, but they were called mandrakes. That's how uh, uh, Jacob's first son, Reuben, slept with his stepmother. He gave a mandrake. That, boy, the Bible's full of stuff that we don't want to talk about. Come on, come on. Come on now. But drugs will mess you up. Uh-uh, not me. Uh, you're the first one in history. It ain't going to mess with you. Come on. Yes or no? I'm trying to be real this morning. 
I'm going to try to help somebody this morning. I said a right relationship with God will allow us to, to walk in the fullness of our purpose. Amen. Guess what it's called? Staying connected. Hallelujah. Are you staying connected with God? You don't even call God God. You call him the big guy upstairs. <laughs> you even talk about God and give him a little G. Mm. You're not connected. Mm. Amen. You should have learned about noun and proper pronoun. Ouch. Amen. Please hear. It's called staying connected. You'll find that in Job chapter 23, verse 14. He performed it, the thing that is appointed unto me. God done made up his mind. He ain't going to change. What you came out of your mother's womb is what he determined you to do till you get to the tomb. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that man that started off in the Olympics, you know, that changes, he's still a man to God. Yeah. Come on. All of a sudden, what's popping up now? Transgender, this and that. Don't you understand? Trash in, trash, trash out. Don't you know whatever you train a child, however you do it, that's what they're, you've heard it put it this way. No child is ever born into this world a racist. Yeah, that's right. Yes or no? Amen. It got to be taught. If that got to be taught, guess what else can be taught? I don't know if I like boys or girls. Because our flesh wants what it wants. You tell, you tell your child, now you can't watch this on TV. What's the one thing they're going to want to watch? The thing you told them to watch. It's in our nature. Hallelujah. God has appointed the things for me. He didn't change his mind. Many women of God, please hear me this morning. We have all heard who the son set free. It's free indeed. It's free indeed. But freedom is walking in the fullness of your purpose. And not hiding from who God called you to be. So you may be a public success, but a private failure. Mm. And as we piggyback off of Sabbath school with the word stupidity, it's even more stupid when you a, a public failure in a private failure. Mm. Hallelujah. You can't get mad when somebody a multimillionaire, at least, well, yeah, I get it. Hallelujah. But you need three transfers to get to you got a three bus transfer. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you. You cannot settle for being a public success while inside you're still a private failure. You better hear what I'm telling you. Remember this. Write it down. Put it on your refrigerator. A sincere cry out is better than an insincere shout out. Amen. Disciples of Christ Jesus. I'm talking about, are you ready to leave Egypt? Have you left Egypt? Mm -hmm. Moses has left Egypt. What is, a rep what is Egypt symbolic of? The world. So when you leave in Egypt, when you leave in the world, open doors of a transition takes place. And which is called a temporary place and not a what? A permanent place. Amen. Am I talking to anybody that's in a transitional place? Amen. God never told the children of Israel to live in the wilderness. He told them to go through the wilderness. Amen. When you are in a transitioning place, somebody prayed a while back uh, and they used the scriptures where the, the people came to Jesus and said, Lord, a man had a wife and he died. And then she married the brother, and he had seven. Now, in the resurrection, whose wife is she? Hmm. And Jesus said, you do error. Because in the resurrection, there is no marriage nor giving in marriage. Notice he didn't say in heaven. He said in the resurrection. Amen. What does the word resurrection mean? A transitional place. It means a catching up. Ain't nobody going to get married while we're being resurrected, while we're putting on incorruption, when uh, uh, in, uh, corruption will be put off and incorruption will be put on. There's nothing going on in the resurrection being caught up. 
So they asked the question wrong. Amen. How many of us are asking God the wrong question? Come on. Moses asked the question, man, what's your name? Hallelujah. Amen. Moses is in a transitional period. But how many know he thought it was his permanent position? Hmm. Never make a transitional place your permanent place. Come on. Now I'm just going through. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Never confuse the world's trinkets as God trophy. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know Joseph could have fell easy victim to that? Right. Ooh. Ooh, God made me a second in command. God said, I didn't call you to be second in command. I told you to set my people Israel free. And the Bible says he gave all of his brothers land. His daddy land. He made all of them wealthy. You didn't get saved to leave other people behind. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. Please hear what I'm telling you. God got you out. So you can get others out. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord declares. God freed you. So you can set others free. I say God freed you. So you can set others free. I need somebody to shout this with me. God reserved me. God preserved me, me, me until he's ready to use me. Until he's ready to use me. Big or small, God can use us all. Right, right. Am I right about it? The Spirit of the Lord declared God freed you to set others free. Can I break this story up? I know we heard so much stuff about this. Amen. Ooh, the burning book. What, why did the burning? Why? Think about this. He's 80 years old. Let me, let me try to put it in perspective. Look at verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. Hallelujah. You want to follow people that can only lead you to the backside and never show you the good side? Mm. <laughs> if people can only lead you to what's what in them. Yes or no? Let me, let me try to make it plain. We pick up the story, men and women of God, where Moses has put the whole prince of Egypt, the whole running from Pharaoh behind him. Is a thing in his path. He done put that on the side. I'm done with Pharaoh. I'm done with Egypt. I'm done with going to them funny bars. I'm done with drinking. I've let that. I put all that behind. And now he has learned how to fit in again. The smell of Egypt is off of him. But the smell of God is not on him yet. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. He still ain't serving God. Right. He's serving everybody but God. Hey, now. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Amen. You'd rather serve your job mm. than to serve God. Mm. You'd rather serve your past than to serve your future. I'm trying to make this word applicable to somebody today. God freed you. Amen. To set others free. All Egypt, the smell of God is not on him yet. He has succeeded in one area while totally failing in another area. Yes or no? Amen. Listen, how do I know that? How many know he's married by now? He got kids by now. Amen. He has new friends. He has new relationships. My God, he's even working in his father-in-law business. Okay. He's giving the outward appearance. His life is full. But the problem is on the inside, he's still empty. The Bible says he led the flock to the backside of the desert. How many know that's God's training him how to lead? God ain't going to start you off big. He's going to start you off small. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Moses never led anything in his whole life. And God says, I'm going to use this for training. But guess what? He only knew how to lead things to the backside. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The backside, the hard place. Hallelujah. The rough spots. You know what I'm saying? Now listen, I can tell somebody, now when we go in this pool hall, you go stand over there and make like you don't know me. That's the backside of life. You understand? We going into the con somebody. I'm not leading you to the front side. Hey, everybody, we here. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Be like a flower on the wall. Don't attract attention. Moses is learning how to lead. I wonder if your job is trying to teach you how to. If I say, if you're a plumber, is God teaching you how to deal with pressure? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you're in managerial, in a managerial position, is God teaching you how to lead? Hallelujah. How many know God takes the natural to show a spiritual? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, I travel. I drive a truck or I do that. Okay. Is God trying to tell you, like, okay, I need you to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. I need you to share the gospel everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Yeah. He told Peter, you a fisherman? I'm going to make you a fisherman on that. Jesus, you're a carpenter? I'm going to show you how to build up people's lives. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm about to tell you. He led the people. He's learning. He's leading the flock, but how many know he's not looking for God? Nowhere in this story is Moses looking for God. Am I talking to anybody? Well, you can say, well, at least I don't smoke anymore, but you're not looking for God, are you? Yeah. Ooh, God healed me, but you're not really looking for God yet, huh? Hallelujah. Moses is not looking for God. Moses said, man, I'm married. I got two sons. Life is good. Amen. And yet God said, wait a minute. I got one mind, one purpose toward you, Moses. And so here's what I've come to tell you. I've come to preach to folks who's tired of giving the appearance that their life is full, that their life is fine. You know inside something's not right. Hallelujah. You know your life is empty. And I've come to preach to those who have been running from God's purpose on their life. When are you going to stop running? Like Moses, 40 years. Of running. But God sent me to tell you he has reserved you. He has preserved you so he can use you. And I believe he's ready to use some of us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people are in agreement yeah. with that this morning? Amen. That God is ready. Yeah. Hollywood put it this way. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Hallelujah. Yeah. Watch this. He has a wife, he has kids, he got, uh, he's working in a father-in-law business 40 years and he's still living beneath God's best. Hmm. He's living beneath God's purpose. How do I know that? Look at verse, back up with me, go to the previous chapter, Exodus chapter 2, and look at verse 19. And I'm going to wait till you get there because I want us all to read it. This is what I'm trying to tell you. That I want to show you that he's living beneath God's best or purpose. Do you have Exodus 2 verse 19? Amen. One, two, three. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and water for the flock. An Egyptian. What do you do? What do you do when people just want to recognize you as your past? Hmm. What do you do? Oh, that's Dwayne, the pool hustler, the gambler. Hallelujah. What do you do when you hate what you've been and you hate where you've been? Hmm. Hallelujah. God, I wish I'd have never been born on this side of the track. I wish I'd have had a loving mother and not a, a drug addict mother. What do you do when you hate what you've been? I've been the prince of Egypt. 
and I saw too many people suffering. I saw too many African American die innocently. Last week, this past week, how many mass shootings? Mm. Since the week they opened up everything. Mm -hmm. This man went into a business and killed people. And yet he was able to get arrested and still be alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. With a gun. He killed a police officer. Amen. Moses is like, I done put that whole Egypt thing behind me. You know, I'm not like that person no more. Oh, uh, God, I'm, I'm put. But you're still not walking in your godly purpose. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Watch this. What do you do when you hate where you've been and hate who you've been? The plans have changed. Yes. Yeah. Everybody thought he was going to be the prince of Egypt. Amen. The plans have changed. Guess what else changed? The place have changed. Right. Hmm. He got kicked out of Egypt. He left the world. He left Egypt. But he never turned to God. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. You can say, well, I don't drink anymore. I don't drink like I used to. Are you serving God? You got people saying, I'm not really a bad person. I'm a good person. Good people going to hell. Come on. God person is not going to hell. So have you defined yourself as a God person, but don't even go to the house of God? Hallelujah. Yes. My God, if you got a chicken coop, what should you find in the chicken coop? Chicken. chicken. Hallelujah. Much. <laughs> you call yourself a child of God, shouldn't you be in God's house? Yes. It's simple to me. Hallelujah. So I want you to see places have changed. Plans have changed. Can I talk more strategically? How is it the pandemic haven't changed you yet? Yeah. Hmm. Some of y'all still thinking it's a hoax. Some of y'all still thinking, oh, I ain't worried about that. And some of us caught it because we wasn't worried about it. Mm. And it didn't hit you. I said the pandemic Although the pandemic didn't change you. The doctor's report didn't change you. The criminal report still didn't change you. You still want it your way. You still want your stinking thing. And God's telling Moses, what do I have to do to get you to change? I done kicked you out of Egypt. Mm. Hallelujah. When they saw Moses, they identified him as a what? Egyptian. An Egyptian. You know Moses didn't want nobody to see him as an Egyptian. I don't have nothing to do with that life. I'm done with it. But you haven't connected to God yet. Am I talking to anybody that's running from their purpose? It's just too big. Man. It's too enormous. And so, he says, what do you do when the doctor's report hasn't changed you? What do you do when your age hasn't changed you? Hmm. You ever heard somebody yeah. say, child, you're too old to be acting that stupid. Mm. Hallelujah. What do you do when your age hasn't changed you? And God says, what do I need to do to get you to change so you can become me fit? for the master's use. Mm -hmm. See, I want you to see in verse one, Moses, in his past, the first thing he learned how to do was serve the Egyptian gods. Mm -hmm. Now he's in the land of Midian. His father-in-law is the priest of Midian. Mm -hmm. So he learned how to serve the Egyptian gods. Now he's learning how to serve the Midian gods. But he's never learned how to serve his God. Hmm. Am I talking to anybody? You have learned how to serve the world, God. Don't talk about God in Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. I learned. I learned how to serve the world's God. Yeah. Oh, when you get to your job, you better not talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I came out of the world from drinking, from drugging, and I came into another God called the world's God. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. 
No, how about a law go out to the family saying we will not have AK-47? We're not trying to take your gun. We're just trying to take away assault rifles. Hallelujah. How, how many know in the military, if you're in Afghanistan, if you're in a war zone, and you go in a bed, and you lock, and, and you call it a quiz for the day, you know you got to lock your gun up, right? You got to be responsible for your gun. And you are in a war zone. How are you not even in a war zone and you let these folks buy these type of guns? Right. Even in military, you got to be held accountable daily for that weapon. How many bullets? Every day. Come on, hallelujah. And nobody's keeping you accountable of a gun that can kill 50 people in five minutes? Mm. Come on now. You're serving another God, Moses. I'm glad you're not serving the Egyptian God, but you're serving the Midian God without even saying, I'm ready to serve my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody that you, you're serving everybody but God? Hmm. And you're calling it, I'm serving God. Hmm. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I would like to ask Moses at this juncture, Moses, are you serving everybody else's God because you're so scared of being and becoming who God called you to be? Is that why you're serving everybody else, God? Because you're so afraid to become who God's called you to be? Hallelujah. And that's what a lot of us are. Are really afraid to be what God's called us to be. Because we're going to rub a whole lot of people wrong. Hmm. Hallelujah. In verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned in the fire, with the fire, and the bush was not consumed. Everybody say, not consumed. Not, not consumed. consumed. In other words, God is trying to teach Moses. It is not so much what you see, but rather what you don't see. I can see the bush is not burned. But what I can't see is why is it not burned? How many know Corinthians say, or Galatians rather, God took the invisible thing to make plain what is seen in the natural realm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Somebody say, make it plain to me. Make it plain to me. What's the purpose of this pandemic? It's not what you see, it's what you cannot see. What's the purpose of electing the first African-American president and then uh, vote in someone appeared to be the most racist president we ever had? Okay. It's not what you see, it's what you should not. It's like, what I don't see here? Yes or no? Amen. So he sees a bush burning that was not consumed. Hallelujah. And he says, wait a minute. What's going on? Come on, get somebody and say, what's going on? What's going on? How can something be on fire and not be destroyed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Uh -huh. Am I talking to anybody on fire for the Lord? Mm -hmm. And you're not destroyed? Mm -hmm. But the devil believe you go, Jesus freak on him, you're going to be destroyed. This is a natural example of how the fire of God can fall on you and you will not be consumed. You will not be destroyed. How can something be on fire and not be destroyed? Hallelujah. When the fire of God falls on you, that means God's purpose will not destroy you. When God let his fire fall on you, guess what God is speaking to you? You can do it. Come on, look at somebody and say, you can do it. You can do it. God freed you to set others free. Moses wasn't worried about nobody else. Hallelujah. Moses killed somebody, and what did they do? They let him free. How many other people killed people in Egypt, and they wasn't set free? Come on. How many people in Egypt is innocent, but they still in bondage? But what does that have to do with me? Because you think you're so holy now 
that that a, a drive-by won't happen to you. You think you're so holy that you won't get a break in. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It is not what you see, it's what you don't see. What about this pandemic? Come on. God, why did you let that happen? Did you show America? See, y'all not really as Christian as y'all thought y'all were. Because mm -hmm. if y'all was really right, y'all would say, we're not closing down the church. But you got people afraid. I might get that. Hallelujah. How is that a God that you serve that will make you catch something that he's calling you to deliver people out of? That doesn't run over somebody's head. How would God let you catch something that he's called you to let people know how they can get out of it? Yeah, yeah. Somebody got to know Deuteronomy. You got to remember Chronicles, right? I will not put any of the evil disease on you that I put on the children of the Egyptians. Mm. Come on now. That plague didn't come for a child of God. Yeah. It came for the rebellious of God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, when the first plague came to Egypt, he said, listen, I don't want y'all to leave your house. Put the blood over the door and stay in. Hallelujah. How many know with the blood over the door that became God's house? In other words, the first plague was inviting you to go to the house of God. Go to the place where it's covered with blood. Amen. We change it and say, get away from the place that's covered with blood. Yeah, yeah. And go to your house. Since then, how many domestic violence has increased? Yeah. Statistically. Yeah. Hallelujah. What is going on that it's not what you see, it's what you don't see. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we don't know how we're going to control these mass shootings at school. You got a pandemic, y'all got to stop going virtual. Mm -hmm. And you think they might pass a law by now? In the future, school's going to be like, we know how to control uh, the mass shooting. That's all the kids go virtual. Somebody say, well, what about the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Your president, the new administration, he passed that last stimulus. Guess what was in that stimulus bill? And y'all didn't, uh, some of y'all may know. Internet, high-speed internet in every house in America. Just like the railroad track, just like the highways. You got to remember, America didn't have paved roads. That took a lot of infrastructure. And your president got on TV and said, the internet is part of my infrastructure. I will put high-speed internet in every house. I say, there's your kids going virtual. Wow. Guess what else was in that bill? Get new gas stations so you can plug your car in. Hallelujah. I'm just worried about my stimulus check. It's not what you see. It's what you don't see. Amen. Hallelujah. For those that are self-employed, for the last two stimulus bills, they, they did two things. One, they pushed back the self-employment tax. So they gave us credit for those that are self-employed. And the other thing, they still forgiving student loans. Now, if you didn't go and file, you better, as soon as you leave here today, you better get on that high-speed internet. So let me find out how to uh, get them to cancel out my student loan. Come on. Because that's part of all three of the stimulus packages. Mm -hmm. But you weren't looking at that. You were like, ooh, ooh, I can go to high hop. I got my stimulus track. Mm -hmm. Go and eat your money mm -hmm. instead of sowing your money. Come on. Mm -hmm. God freed you to set others free. Moses is married. 40 years done passed. He ain't worried about Egypt. Egypt is behind him. But God is not in front of him. Am I talking to anybody at this moment? You put down, well, I'm not going to them clubs anymore, but you ain't going to church either. Any little thing can get you to miss church. Oh, I felt some tingle in my stomach. I can't go to church. Oh, it's a pretty sunny day. I can't go to church. Oh, it's raining. And, yeah, Egypt is behind you, but God is no way in front of you. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. Be careful that you work so hard to be a public success 
but still be a private failure. Amen. Is this word blessing anybody? Amen. Amen. Because we're about to get to some good stuff here. The fire was not consumed. He said, and the fire, huh, and the bush was not consumed. Here's why I wanted to really get you to see verse 3. Verse 3 is you got to lick your fingers on verse 3. This is finger looking good. And Moses said, I will now. Everybody say, I will now. I will now. Now? You mean after 80 years? Now? 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 now. Yeah. I guess somebody can say better late. Never. You better say that again. Better late yeah, I messed up a few years. Yeah, I've been off track, but guess what? I will now turn. Now. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Oh. He said, now. Somebody shout, I'm a, God use me to free my family. Say that right now. God, God use me to free my family. family. You got to believe this now. Moses is 80 years old. How many know Moses can say, I've seen a lot in my lifetime. Amen. From Egypt. To Midian. Ooh. Ooh, I've seen. I've seen a lot. Amen. I've seen pyramids built. Right. Hallelujah. With no electric tools. Uh -huh. I've seen a lot in my 80 years. But guess what Moses said? But I've never seen or experienced anything like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody this morning? Amen. Where you can say, Lord, I've seen a lot in my lifetime. But I ain't never experienced nothing like this. I know that I know I heard you say I was called. I know that I know something keeps me close to the fire. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, I now will turn. Is anybody in their now season? Now, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knows how to get Moses' attention. You think God knows how to get our attention? Hallelujah. God knows how to make streams in the desert, pathways in the wilderness, right? God knows how to make the crooked places straight. God has protected us from a pandemic so we can say, now I will turn aside. Amen. God protected us from a doctor's report that we may say, now I will turn aside. Some of us belong in jail, but now I will turn aside. Hallelujah. God protected us from a pandemic. He blessed us with financial blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us got our stimulus? I didn't get any. But many people got blessed. Amen. Amen. Still don't want to bless God, though. Mm. You got all that money, you can't give God 10% of that? Come on. But you call yourself a God child? Mm. Really? One of my friends. Watch this. Could you see that God is blessing you through this plague? Yes or no? Amen. If you ever got the unemployment, you can say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Some people are making more money Come on. unemployed than going to work. God, were you trying to get my attention? I saw the bush burning. Hmm. But it wasn't consumed. Amen. I saw something I ain't never saw before. How hmm. I'm making more money now and I'm not working. Come on. I'm trying to make it plain to somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. And yet, listen to me. Moses does not equate the bush burning as a God thing. He just look at it like, oh, that's like a thing. Hallelujah. But he does not equate it as a God thing. If you started equating this pandemic as a God thing, to open the church to say, listen, some of us got to get right. Hallelujah. I want to ask you something. What is God doing right now in your life, but you don't know where God is working at? Amen. Or you don't know, or you don't get it that it's a God thing. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't get it. You still don't see it. 
Come on, Sister Alicia. You need a job. You didn't put a uh, you didn't send out resumes, did you, sis? You didn't go. God caused a pandemic to make this person don't show up, so you can start showing up. What are you at? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then we speak that last year, sister. We say when she get a house and all, the guy gonna open the door for her. You got up here, Pastor. I got my furniture. I got my lock. I got. I got my uh, ID. I got. Hello, you ready? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me God won't do it. Come on. But will you recognize it's a God thing? Yeah. Oh. When does Moses recognize that it's a God thing? Mm -hmm. I saw 9/11 as a God thing. Yeah. America started imploding. At 9-11. I know a lot of folks don't want to hear that. Read the book. The Harbingers. It started. And ever since then. We've been imploding. Look, look at our political system. It has never been in such a disarray. And disorange. There are senators. That outright. Saying stuff now. And don't care. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're using it as a bully pulpit. You know a few years ago, we would never have politicians doing that. I was thinking about the mayor they fired in Chicago. Then I was thinking about the other mayor. I was thinking about Governor Edwards of Louisiana that went to jail. I was thinking about the guy that screamed too loud and he couldn't, uh, he had to get out of the presidential race. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, look at what's going on. It's not what you see. It should be what you're not seeing. Look at verse 4, men and women of God. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Somebody say, make this plain to me, man of God. Make this plain to me, Lord God. He turned aside, which means what? He left the flock. Remember he led the flock to the backside of the desert? So he left the flock. Or how about if I say he left his job? To do what? To get a little closer. What's another name for get a little closer? How about if I say to get a deeper revelation of what was going on? Am I talking to anybody that's ready to get a deeper revelation of what's going on? He said, now I will turn aside and get a little closer, a little deeper revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But, everybody say but. but. God says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know all y'all want a deeper revelation, but you can't come and get this revelation with your shoes still on. Because mm. your shoes still represent Egypt. Even though you left Egypt, you never came to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says to get this deep revelation, you got to take your shoes off. Come on. Because your shoes represent where you've been and how you've lived. It represents who you are. Somebody say make it plain. Make it plain. Make it plain. Make it plain. If you take a female that's never been to church and you invite her to church and she come to church with Daisy Do shorts on and a t-shirt with no bra, isn't that all the clothes she got? Mm -hmm. Hold on a minute, sister. You can't come in this revelation dressed like that, yes or no? Amen. So her wardrobe will what declare how she used to think. She didn't think it was wrong to dress like that. Moses kept his shoes from Egypt. Hmm. Uh, Come on. How many of y'all done kept some stuff from Egypt that you should have been got rid of? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Filthy language. Yes. Lying. Yes. Watching certain stuff on TV. Wasn't that what all supposed to be left behind? Yes. I left Egypt, but I didn't connect with God. After 80 years, now this is the first time in 40 years 
that we hear him talking about God. How many know he didn't leave Egypt to serve God? No. Nope. Well, that one over somebody. Else. <laughs> Why did he leave Egypt? He got in trouble. Yeah, kill somebody. Some people get off a of drug because they got in trouble of an overdose. Right. Well, I ain't doing this no more. Some of us quit smoking because, oh, you know, cigarettes six something in the pack now. Oh, you mean if we go back to a dollar, you're going to start smoking again? I wonder before them 40 years happened. I wonder if, no, if Moses was thinking, I sure hope I can go back to Egypt one day. We don't know what he was thinking, right. but we do know he did not leave Egypt to serve God. He left Egypt because he was running. Yes or no? Amen. Why did you leave the world? Not to serve God, but because you're running? Running means, let me call on God when I need him. Oh, God, help me out of this trouble. God going to get you out of the trouble, but you're not going to serve him. Didn't God help Moses out that trouble? He, he didn't get executed. Nope. But was he ready to serve God? Nope. Am I talking to anybody where God has healed you, touched your body, delivered you, gave you a hedge of protection, and you still don't want change? Somebody need to say, but now I will turn aside. I'm going to get deeper. I want to get deeper. God freed you to set others free. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're getting blessed, would you just praise the Lord? Give me a wave up. Let me know y'all still alive. Say amen. Amen. God says, wait. A closer look. A deeper revelation. A deeper experience. The fire may not be consuming the bush, but if you don't take your shoes off, the fire will consume you. Mm. That means you can't play church with God. Amen. His fire will consume you. Make you lose your mind. Hallelujah. You may be getting by, but you ain't getting away. Come on. Hallelujah. And God had to stop Moses and say, wait a minute, Moses. See, you got this thing twisted. You think because the fire is not consuming the bush, it won't consume you. Oh. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody? You want deeper revelation, but you still want to live the way you're living. Hmm. Watch what you're watching. Hmm. Talk to people any kind of way. Hallelujah. Some of us calling ourselves Christians still got to get over spirit. Come on. A hook a brother up spirit. Oh. Hallelujah. He says, wait a minute, Moses. Take your shoes off. This fire will consume you. This is holy ground. Shoes represent how you live. It represents where you live. It represents your lifestyle. Uh, somebody should have shouted, Lord, I'm ready to take my shoes off. Hmm. Are you serious? That means I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm not going to live the way I used to live. If I want to get deeper, if I want to get closer, I'm ready to take my shoes off. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to change everything that I used to do. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Look at verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. See, in other words, many women of God, he knew the God of his fathers. He just never served the God of his father. Am I talking to anybody? Y'all know about God. Y'all know about church. But you still ain't serving. You still doing what you want to do. You got people still having issues with paying tithe. You're doing what you want to do. Hallelujah. You got, well, I don't really need to read my Bible all day. Can I tell you what's another name for the Bible? Word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word. word. How many know God calls this word bread? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm the bread of life. Hallelujah. God gives you bread to eat every day. And you're telling God, I don't want to eat it. Hallelujah. He knew about the God of his father, but he never served them. Listen, Moses was Egyptian educated, Egyptian trained. Egyptian theology. Now he has Midian theology. He's trained in the Midianite ways. But he does not do what God wanted him to do. 
He's still not walking in God's best. He's serving every other God but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. So what does he do? He does his best to run and hide from God. Hallelujah. How do we run and hide from God? You know, God's called you to be a teacher and you refuse, you refuse to study his word. How are you ever going to be a teacher? You know, God's called you to, to go open prayers in ministry, to be part of ministry. You're still not. Some of us got wildfire. We don't want to sit under anybody. I just want to go do it. Really? It's crazy. God freed you to set others free, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Another 40 years, Moses is now living in excuse. You remember why Moses said, should I be an Egyptian or a Hebrew? Right? Yeah. So guess what he do? He leave Egypt, and guess what he never have to see again? How the police kill black people. I'm way over town now. I, I done moved to the million dollar suburb. I don't need to deal with them. I'm over on the cross. I don't even have to deal with them no more in my life. <laughs> and God said, is this the reason why I gave you that wealth? Is this the reason why I gave you that job? Is this the reason why I gave you that stimulus? So you can be all about you? Hmm. And now he has an encounter with God. And he's hearing God's voice. Wow. Wow. God, are you real? Come on, look at somebody and say, I know God's real. I know God's real. We talked about 7 and 8 where God said, Moses, I've heard the afflictions of my people. I see how they are prepped. Can't Moses say right about now, okay, what does that have to do with me? Hallelujah. Should we fight against assault rifles? Well, I don't, I, I don't have a say. You do have a say in it. Please hear what I'm telling you. Moses could be saying, okay, what does this have to do with me? Listen, what we wink at or what we turn our heads to, God still sees the people hurting. Hallelujah. Amen. There's kids being self, uh, 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 sex trafficked, mm -hmm. yeah. kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, what does that have to do with me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God said, I called you for this purpose, to be a blessing. Does anybody know that you're called to be a blessing this morning? When are you going to wait to become a blessing? Why are you waiting to become a blessing? Hallelujah. This is the year that God says, I will open doors that no man can shut. And I will shut doors that no man can open. How many believe that this morning? Yeah. God will open a door for you to get in your right place. It don't matter how long it's been. You can say... I will now turn us out. Now. now I'm going to get right. Now I'm get now it's better late than never, God. Amen. The Bible says, God says, now I want you to go. How I many know when God says, I've seen and I heard and I need, God is really talking about us. God says, when I'm ready, that means me and you are ready. Hallelujah. Amen. When I'm ready, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Hallelujah. If any man open, I will come in. God says to Moses, I'm ready. Are you? Mm. That's what he says, yes or no. Right. Moses, I'm ready to go. Are you ready? Notice, notice Moses doesn't say at this time his deficiencies. He said, wait a minute. I don't know your name. Mm. Hallelujah. God, I've seen the Egyptian gods. You remember? The Egyptian gods, they're making calves out of gold. Yes or no? Amen. He said, I've seen the Midian gods now. Somebody said, make it real plain to me. Huh. I'm from New Orleans, so I don't know about here, but they got churches on every corner. Amen. The Baptist, the Catholic, the Methodist. Uh, uh, right in, in Katy, when I first came, I did a demographic. They had 50 churches in a 10-mile area out here in Katy. Yeah. 50 churches. I ain't even go to OK. I just put it in this zip code. Is that what Moses was saying? 
Lord, I done lived 80 years. I done seen this God, that God, the sun God, the alligator God, the baboon God. What is your name? Hallelujah. Jesus said to Mary, go tell my disciples and Peter, I go to my father and your father. He's no longer called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's called your father. Our father, which are in heaven. When are you going to make it personal? Hallelujah. That's what he's telling Moses. Moses, I got a great work for you to do, but you got to have a right relationship with me. You can't have your thing, you know, watching the flock of Jethro, and I'm calling you to go deliver it. You can't have your thing trying to coexist with my thing. Am I talking to anybody this morning? God will provide for you. God will make a way for you. Big or small, God wants to use us all. Am I right about it this morning? Hallelujah. And so he says, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. God sent me to tell you he's ready to use some folks this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for God to use you? Amen. Would you stand to your feet with me as I hasten to close? My God. What is your name? In verse 12 to 13, we see that he said, my name is I am that I am. Listen. This is how God is fulfilling his prophecy of open doors this year. He's saying, if you're willing, the bush has been burning. Will you turn around, uh, turn aside now and go deeper? You've seen miracles, right? Brother O's mother, your mother, sister uh, Alicia. Amen. What about the accident? What, what about the police? What about the CPS? Y'all seen the bush burning and it wasn't consumed? Come on. When are you ready to go deeper? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, somebody say now. 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 God says, it's time for you to face your past so you can get victory over it. Stop running from your past. Stop running from your failures. Stop running from your fears and say, God, if you can use a nobody, then here I am. God, you freed me. So I can set others free. Hallelujah. Yeah, but it shouldn't take all that. You know how far gone you were? Mm, was I, am I the only one that was that far gone? Mm -hmm. uh, nobody else want to be honest? Come on. I was gone. How many of us don't? We're not ashamed to tell people how many partners we had sleeping around. Yes or no? Come on, man. Some of us slept with our sister's husband. Our, and some of us slept with our brother's wife. I mean, come on. Hmm. We did some crazy stuff out there. Yes, yes. Lord. Now will you turn aside and say, God, I'm ready to get serious. Amen. But you're going to say, don't take all that. And then y'all remember Friday night? Getting out of work. <laughs> rushing home to, let me take a shower and get ready to go out. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> rushing to go out. Yeah. And you still won't rush to get to church. Come on. And he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God sent me to tell you. Confront your past. Get victory over your past. And then let God use you to set other people free today. God believes in you. Guess what God sent me to tell you? God needs you to believe in yourself now. God believes in you. I believe in you. God says, I need you to believe in yourself now. Can God use you? Yes. Yes. God wants you. That's why he set you free. That's why uh, there's people that failed where you got set free. Come on. God pulled Moses out of Egypt. What? So he can go work for Jethro? Hallelujah. God wants to use you today, men and women of God. Would you let him use you today? Every head bow, no one looking around. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. God Jesus, Lord Jesus, I want to make sure that your purpose is now my purpose. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life. All that I have, I give it to you. My pain, my hurt, my joy. 
my success, my success. Everything, that everything that I have, I give it to you, Lord. To you, Lord. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead, that I may live forever. Lord Jesus, I submit and commit my whole life to you. Be real in my life. Holy Ghost! Bring me to the burning bush that I may go deeper in God, that I might become me fit for the master's use. Now let everyone in agreement say amen. 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 amen, amen. Come on, give God a praise clap. My God, my God, my God. Come on, look at our brother and sister and say, you already look like you're me fit for God's use. Now we're getting ready for our tithe and our offering. For those that's watching, we're going to ask Sister H if she'd come up and help us. This is our worship time. We want to thank you for tuning in. We know that the message blessed you as well as stirred up your soul. MOGFC, where we are growing families, not just a church. If you need a healing or prophetic word, or if you know someone that needs prayer, we want to invite you to join us in our time of worship. Our service times are Sabbath school every Saturday morning starting at 9.15 a.m. Sabbath worship is every Saturday morning starting at 10.30 a.m. Our weekly Bible study is every Monday evening starting at 7 p.m. Our weekly prayer service is every Friday evening starting at 7.30 p.m. Our location, 4741 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas. 77084. Our mailing address, P.O. Box 218-242, Houston, Texas, 77218. Or watch us live at www.new.livestream.com slash M-O-G-F-C or www.youtube.com slash M-O-G-F-C. Our web address, www.mogfc.org. Our email address, pastor at mogfc.org. We, we would love to see you soon. On behalf of Apostle D and the MOGFC family, be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing.